Well, I'm excited to speak to you. Um, I got a chance to watch the first two episodes and I love what I see. So congratulations on the show. And I've been seeing that it's been a lot of positive reviews as well. So I hope you guys are taking it all in. Yes, we are a day at a time, an hour at a time. Seriously. (laughs) All right. So Sadiqa, I'll start with you now. Reality shows about large families are always so appealing to viewers. And obviously you guys have merged culture, religion, Hollywood, and that's really what makes your show so appealing, but it's also female dominated. So how excited are you to showcase all the girl power on the show? We are so excited. You know, growing up, we grew up in a very patriarchal society, especially given our background in Afghanistan and education. And to be able to be like, break the stigma and the stereotype and say, this is what Afghan women in America, America, our story are like, and to be able to share our journey, it makes us feel good because I know that there's people out there that can relate to it. Mm -hmm. And that's the most important thing is to share the story, the journey and say, Hey, you know what? You might not be the only one going through this. Now, um, Noria, for you, I'll ask because you're, you're really doing, um, a lot in the investment business. And so obviously you guys are on Hulu. The Kardashians are on Hulu, right? You guys are a large family. They're a large family. So the comparisons have already started. Are you guys hoping to following their footsteps footsteps as far as um, expanding your likeness and your businesses beyond the scope of reality television and really using this platform to take your families to the next level? I think, well, we would love to use our platform to help give back, which is why we have our charity, Buttaka. And yearly, we hold fundraisers and it's for last year, it was for refugee women and children. The year before it was for victims in Afghanistan. So that's definitely something that we want to focus on as a family is how we can band together and give back. So that's, I think, goal number one. Now, Hamida, as the youngest sister of the bunch, um, what were you what would you say you admire about, you know, your older sisters who are I guess you guys have. Um, define them as a bit more conservative and where would you say you guys clash in the middle oh well i think <laughs> obviously because we're the wolf pack we're the young we're the ones that were born we're in the america trifecta. we're the trifecta <laughs> there's two more eight nine ten <laughs> and then there's the elder sisters who were born in, Af- in afghanistan and they just have a very different mentality and we just have to be a little bit more filtered around them and that's where the clash comes in is with the with the culture and our identities the cultural expectations of how we should conduct ourselves Mm -hmm. are you guys prepared for um some people who may not be positively receptive to the show because of all of the um cultural stipulations that people may may expect you guys to have um in addition obviously to marrying the religious aspect of it i just think for us it's so important just to be to speak our truth and this is our individual journeys. We're not representing, you know, a full a whole country. We're not representing all Muslims. This is our family. These are our struggles. This is how we're balancing our culture with our daily lives and just being authentic. Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Now, um, we get a sneak peek of, of your mom on the show. We see her kind of sprinkled throughout. How was it getting her to get on board with being on camera and understanding what you guys are going to be doing as far as being reality stars now? So it it was a challenge because we we respect and love our mother. Heaven is beneath her feet. And she is not one to ever be in the public eye. She's very conservative. She speaks very few words. And when she speaks, it's like wisdom. Mm -hmm. And we we had to be vulnerable in front of her. We had to have tough conversations with her. And those were conversations that we had to have in front of her and then also deal with the consequences of those conversations after filming. So it was a bit challenging, but it was also something new we learned about ourselves. And, you know, we have like this, we have to be one way in front of mom and one way in front of ourselves. And we're trying to break that and we want to just be ourselves all the time. But with the culture and the religion, there just has to be that respect and that boundary. So it's, it's still challenging. Mom is very excited though. It's very, oh. she supports it. Trust me, you can never get her to do something she doesn't want to do. So oh, <laughs> she <God>. supports us. <laughs> now, has your guys' living situation changed since 
filming rep for the show because well, obviously the you guys filmed this a while ago and now um it's airing so are there still sisters living in i think it was four sisters living in the house in one of the houses there was at one time um because rob Mia was staying with us so we still live together we're still on the wolf pad. <laughs> yeah and um, I still wow. love has her own place now. I still live by myself and Shakur's with her husband and then Kadir's with her husband and her kids and Mazika's still in London. So the living situations are the same for the most part. Are you guys um, making sure that you, ma- that you maintain your close bond um, as you embark on this journey? Because as you said, you have to relive a lot of these moments as you watch them back, which can be, I guess, you know, I don't want to say re-traumatizing, but it can re- you, have- you have to rehash it when you're watching these things back, think that you may have already reconciled or healed from, and then you're adding the world's opinions um, into whatever you guys have already dealt with and reconciled. It can be a bit emotional sometimes. We yesterday, um, all uh, half of us got together and binged it. And it was funny just kind of reliving those scenes and what happened and just the commentary we're like wait well you said that i didn't know you said that and then we'll like hear the confessionals and we're seeing it all for the first time so at the end of the day it's all love we just keep an open line of communication we did and we made a pact you know prior to the show airing like we're still sisters what was said was said we're still family and we just kind of stick to that code like no matter what we're always going to be there for each other there has been ups and downs but we believe firmly in just you know connecting and because blood is thicker than drama yes it is (laughs) (laughs) what will you say are also the differences um with the if any if any um between the older, more conservative sisters and the Wolfpack in the way in which they handle romantic relationships, because I would imagine that um, there is a there can be a stark contrast there. Oh, there is a huge oh. contrast there. I mean, Khadija has been with her husband for about 18 years. He's her first love, really. And Muz- Muzlifa uh, married her husband, what, at 19? At 19, after meeting him three times, mm-hmm. she had a very Islamic, you know, approach to her marriage. And Chase the the same way. And, you know, we, I don't know. I mean, like, so we believe in dating, but Mm -hmm. with the elder sisters, it was the guy you're dating first or last is the guy you're going to marry. Yeah. And so they were dating to marry off the bat. And, you know, we date to have fun sometimes. (laughs) That's a really big contrast. We don't want the pressure of thinking about, am I going to marry this guy? Dating is already hard enough. And every time we bring a guy, we're like, are you going to marry him? Are you going to marry him? We're like, no, let me just me wet my feet a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> and with them, it's like, oh, if you're talking to him, you must marry him. So I don't know. That's the big, biggest difference. And overall, what are you hoping that viewers take from your family? We want to really just display that it is a big family. It is a roller coaster ride. And we do come from a very unique situation but we want to utilize our platform to do good, like Nuria was saying earlier. And we want to just break the stigma that people have on Muslim American women, that you have to look a certain way, you have to act a certain way. And it's just frankly not true. And we're the prime example of that. Well, well done. I look forward to watching the rest of the season. Thank and you. Uh, Thank you guys will get a season two. Thank you. Thank we you. hope so. Thank Thanks. you so much. So nice to meet you. So I will start with you, Shakur. Obviously, out of the 10 sisters, you are the proud leader of the Wolf Pack. Um, you consider yourself the protector of the whole family, but really the spearheader of the younger group of the bunch. So you're already you've already been in entertainment. So this four way into reality television is, I would assume, right up your alley. So how has your work thus far prepared you for this moment? And how much did you try and prepare your sisters for this world that you've already been living in? Having Teflon skin and and really just being able to disassociate yourself from the real world and what happens in the entertainment world and being able to just not listen to the static, to be able to really just stay laser focused and keep your eye on the prize and to not get distracted. And I feel like I definitely try to implement that in my sister's lives and tell them how how imperative it is for them to do so. But it's just kind of like trial and error. You don't really know how to prepare for it unless you go through something yourself. You can tell someone something and they can sympathize with you, but until you go through it, it doesn't have that same gravitas. Do you know what I mean? So I yeah. feel like basically, and stay true to yourself, you know? You don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. Just have your boundaries, have your have your limits. 
Now, knowing the ins and outs of the business, were there major hesitations for you and your family to enter into this space? Oh, sure. You're always um, concerned of how everyone's going to interact with each other, uh, heads bumping, there being friction, uh, people seeing just how crazy you guys really are. (laughs) You know, the dysfunction that every family has. We just happen to actually reveal our dysfunction and... You just don't know how people are going to perceive it. You know, you have people that are either going to like it or love it. But I feel like you just kind of have to just stay in your truth, stay in your truth and be authentic. And I feel like everything kind of works itself out. Jamil, for you, what do you feel as if your family brings to this oversaturated space of reality television that hasn't necessarily been seen or done before? Well, I know that there's many things, right? First, we're like the first Afghan-American family on television. You know, we're 10 sisters uh, cut from the same cloth. And, you know, this story really taught, it showcases, you know, us, you know, in two different worlds of tradition and modern modernism and us walking that fine line with all, you know, being between two cultural identities, um, you know, and secrets and sisterhood shows that journey for us sisters. Um, and along all of that, you know, everyone is raw, authentic and real. And um, every sister has a story that someone out there can relate to. For you again, how do you feel as if you guys are prepared to stay grounded um, as the S10 sisters as a tight knit family, um, you know, continuing to kind of navigate these two worlds as you're now adding in Hollywood to all of this. I think a lot of that comes from just, you know, either you're grounded or you're not. And that's something that was always taught to us from time we were, were children. And I think a lot of that has to do with our faith. That is our core and everything else comes into that. But we have our sister meetings. We, we check each other. Um, you know, there are moments where you, you forget the cameras are rolling and, you know, um, then you kind of like, okay, wow, I'm looking at myself almost in a mirror and you see those things. But through all of this, I feel like we're all, we're always ever evolving. Now, Shakur, I think there are going to be a lot of, um, puns because your name is Shakur, right? You were a rapper from what I, from what (laughs) I know. And obviously we have, you know, we have Tupac Shakur, who is a cultural icon in itself, in him, in himself. And he was just inducted into the Hollywood Walk of Fame. So I feel like this show has really come at a perfect time for you all. Are you 100 percent done with the music industry or are you hoping that um, you kind of dabble a bit more into it now that you have this platform as well? You know what? I'm open for whatever blessings and opportunities come my way. I'm never going to just say, no, I'm completely against or for because you never know things change from day to day a great situation may present itself to where you're like you know what i'm in the vibe it's a good team you know everything is a collaborative effort so if you find someone to make magic with and on any level i feel like you should pursue that endeavor so for me i always have the love for music i've had such a strong background in it before it was a popular thing to do before it was a saturated market when it was hard to get a record deal where there was no social media where you had to get it on just talent and merit without any, you know, things that or gimmicks or stuff like that. Like it was just a whole nother beast. So I will always have that love and appreciation for music and I wouldn't be opposed to it if it came up, but I'm just not in the zone of like chasing it. Like I used to do, like, it was like, this is what I'm doing. And I was sticking, I was like, no, if it comes cool, I'll accept it. Thank you, God. But if it doesn't, I'd be perfectly fine. I'm more so focused on my acting. And Jamila, um, there is going to be a lot of comparisons, too, because you guys are a large family. It's it's a lot of girl power in this show, which we're excited to see. Um, There's a lot of beauty. You all are very beautiful ladies. And, you know, there's another big family that's out there. So how are you guys prepared to handle the um, comparisons to probably the Kardashian family now that you guys are here? You know, we're all about women empowering other women and supporting other people's successes. You know, um, they're definitely trailblazers in this industry and paved a way. So I think it's great. I mean, we're excited to be on Hulu and, you know, we're we're here as a the Zosada sisters are here just to tell their story, uh, bring a different perspective, show cultural, uh, you know, d- you know, just show our culture uh, and show our raw, vulnerable selves. So that's what we want to do. <laughs> And expanding upon the culture conversations, there's a lot of misconceptions about, um, you know, the Muslim faith and specifically how that relates to you guys' background um, with 
your family being of Afghanistan and Afghanistan descent. What are you looking to dispel with this show and within your specific lifestyle with this specific series? You know, we're not here to like, we're telling our story, but we're not representing every Afghan, African-American woman out there. We're not representing the entire, you know, Muslim nation. We're just showing that we're a family that is Muslim, but we live our lives the way we do. Right. And we're guided by our faith, but this is our take on it. And um, Shakur, you want to add to that? Yeah, it's just that we're not going to we're not advocating for a specific group of people or specific religious faith of people. It's just a glimpse into our lives from our perspective and showing people what we went through and just the journey, taking someone on a journey. I mean, there's going to be a lot of people who, you know, may not agree with it. There might be people who do agree with it. There's something out there for somebody where they can say, wow, I definitely went through this. And not just in the, you know, Afghan culture and Islamically, this is across just religious faith in general, people who are extremists in every religion, you know, and people who are, there's just like, there's, there's, there's more, there's so many different diasporas, you know what I mean? First generation Americans who have immigrant families that will be able to say, you know what, we had to do these transitions too. We had to walk the fine line and balance of life of keeping culture alive and trying to please our parents, but still staying true to ourselves. And I feel like people, any denomination would be able to relate to that in some kind of shape or form if you're a first generation. And, you know, one of the things that people probably assume is, oh, you're not educated or, you know, you're, you know, you're, you're oppressed. And, you know, women in our culture are revered. And obviously we know what's going on in the social climate in Afghanistan. But, you know, we're here to also show the world that Afghan American women, you know, are, are educated and we're here and we're doing what we need to do to, to basically survive. I mean, that's what we've done our entire lives is started from the bottom and we just keep working, working, working and see where it goes. Well, you ladies are doing a great job. Um, I look forward to watching the rest of the season play out and hopefully we get a season two because you guys are adding a lot of spice to the reality television world. Thank so you. Wow. so congratulations on the show. Um, obviously, people are very excited about it. It's a large family. There are a lot of cultural things to be um, exposed and explained in this show, things that we haven't necessarily seen before. So congratulations again. Um, and I've already spoken to your sister. So I already know all of the spice that you guys bring in addition to, <laughs> to, to watching um, the first two episodes. And how have you been taking in all of the reactions from people who have already watched the, the few the first few episodes of the show? You know, uh, those who are close to me have watched it and they've been very supportive, um, very excited for us. Um, you know, we were blessed to have this opportunity to showcase who we are as a family, uh, a family of 10 women. So it's been it's been great. There are times that we did say, don't read all the comments, you know what I mean? So <laughs> sometimes it's OK to not read all the comments um, just because, you know, you we've worked very hard for this and. Who wants to, you don't need Debbie Downers. <laughs> you know, there's going to be people who have their own opinion and they're entitled to it. And I'm entitled to not respond. <laughs> Now, the, throughout the show, we get to see a lot of um, you guys' culture being, you know, your, be, with your parents and the first half of you guys being born and raised in Afghanistan versus the second half being more modern and Americanized because um, your family had already come to America. So we get to see a lot of not cultural divide, but just cultural differences between the sisters. So as one of the older sisters on the series um, versus the younger ones, despite you guys' clashing at times, your experience has been very different. What would you say you admire about your younger sisters who aren't considered to be as conservative as the older ones? I respect my younger sisters. You know, they're well-educated, well-spoken. They still follow, you know, the religion. You know, they still are Muslim. They, you know, they fast, they pray, you know, maybe they dress a little clad and that's okay. You know, I'm not, not going to judge you. I, you know, I'm not a judger. That's, that's God's place, you know? So I respect that. The, I respect their ambition um, and the respect they have for my mother, our mother. Um, that's really important to me to never lose sight of respect because that is huge in our faith and our culture. And so the fact that they haven't lost that um, does give me solace, you know, 
just because you're born in America, you're still children of refugees and you understand the hardship that they endured to come to this country and to give us a better life. And so just to always humble ourselves. So sometimes you just got to be like, humility goes a long way. <laughs> so, yeah. Now, as a woman who's guided by her faith, were you nervous about bridging the gap between um, faith, culture and entertainment? What type of reservations did you have before agreeing to appear on a reality series? I consider myself the bridge between the younger sisters and the older sisters, because I do like to go out with them and whatnot, but I may not dress the same. I may not participate in all the activities, but I'll still have a good time with them. And then when I'm with my older sisters, you know, I kind of know the rules. Like when you go to their homes, I got to dress accordingly. And, you know, and I'm okay with that. I'm I'm completely okay with that because to me, it's a respect level. Um, What was the rest of your question? I so apologize. I was just saying, were you nervous about um, bridging the gap between the two worlds and doing so on a grand scale, like a reality series? I was the only thing that I truly was concerned about was I did not want anything to divide us. Um, I wanted to for us to be united and stand as a united front. Um, Some of the secrets I did not find out until I saw the show. (laughs) So some of them because I wasn't in, you know, I wasn't there taping. Um, So some of the, you know, some of the secrets were kind of eye opening for me. but at the end of the day, I support my sisters and what they do and stand by them because as an older sister, I want to lead by example and let you know that no matter what you do, I will still love you. I will still stand behind you. Um, there are things that maybe, you know, I'm not in a total agreements with and that's okay, but I am not here to judge Life is about taking risks. Um, we have a variety of personalities that you probably noticed. Yeah. Um, and we definitely had, you know, some reservations about being in the public eye, but we believe our unity, you know, can surpass any obstacles. Now, this is um, a, a family unit that we've never seen before. As I mentioned, you guys are really showcasing a different side of a family that of a family culturally, um, religiously, how imperative is this representation for you and your family and others um, who may look and have similar experiences to you guys, but have never seen themselves on television before in this way? So this is our story, our journey of 10 sisters. Uh, We truly are not trying to be representative of all Muslim people, of all Afghans, we're, we just want to share our journey and our path as children of refugees. And this is what we have gone through. This is what this is real life for us. This is our truths. And so we're really not trying to represent everyone. Mm-hmm. Um, there are people that I know will have similar stories that have not had the opportunity to share them, you know, there are people that have told me like, wow, like you guys, you guys opened up and you guys were vulnerable and you guys shared what you guys have gone through. And so it, it, and it does take strength and it does take, you know, it does take a lot of strength to be able to do that. Um, 10 sisters are rare, as you know. Um, So (laughs) that's, that's not something you find every day. So we are brought at a level of uniqueness um, by having a variety of, opinions between siblings because we do share so many different personalities i guess you've probably seen brenda so it's maneuvering our way through that and just again being a united front and remembering what we stand for our family motto which is family above everything well you guys do a good job and i look forward to watching the rest of the season and hopefully we'll see you guys back in season two. Oh, very much from your lips to god's ear thank <laughs> you so much brenda i appreciate that 